something. السلام عليكم يا هلا وسهلا فيكم حياكم الله معانا بدرتنا لليوم وهي احد مبادرات الاداره العامه للاشعه والخدمات التطبيقيه بوزاره الصحه مبادره مبادره تدريب عن بعد هدفنا دائما زي ما عودناكم اثار الفكر ونقل المعرفه واكتشاف العقول والخبرات ضيفتنا اليوم المتالقه طبيبه استشاريه من مدينه الامير سلطان الطبيه العسكريه حاصل على البورد السعودي في تخصص الاشعه التشخيصيه وتخصصها الدقيق البريست اند وومن ايمجينج حياك حياها الله معانا دكتورة ملاك السعيد يسعدنا ويشرفنا بمبادرة الحضور تفضلي دكتورة ملاك uh, مساء الخير Hello everyone and thank you for inviting me to present this lecture on uh, breast MRI Today I will talk about the main topics that could help generally an in interpretation of uh, breast MRI At the beginning, we should know that breast MRI is the most sensitive method for detection of breast cancer, reaching up to 90%. As you know, breast cancer is the most common cancer in Saudi females. The chance of develop breast cancer is one in eight women during their life. Now we'll go through the main topics related to breast MRI. First, I will talk briefly about breast MRI anatomy and technique. After that, uh, you should know the common indications of breast MRI. After that, uh, we will talk about the uh, breast MRI reporting and virus assessment categories. Last thing, we'll talk about the importance of breast MRI in clinical practice. This is a sagittal MRI image. Show the anatomy of breast MRI. As you can see here, this is the skin. This is the nipple areola complex. This is the fat, glandular tissue, and here you can see the pectoralis major and minor, pectoralis minor. Technique, uh, these are minimum standards required for performing breast MRI. We should use dedicated breast coil. Women should lie in a prone position. The best time of breast MRI examination is the second week of menstrual cycle. These are uh, 
important scanning parameters, as uh, you can see here, the slice thickness um, should be 0.3 centimeter with no gap. The contrast agent as gadolinium with a dose of 0.1 millimole per kilogram and the rate is one to two ml per second followed by 20 ml saline infusion. These are the sequences obtained in breast MRI. The first one is T1 weighted imaging without fat sat, T2 weighted imaging with fat suppression. Uh, we have also a pre-contrast T1 weighted imaging with fat suppression. Uh, also the post-contrast uh, T1 weighted imaging with fat suppression. And this is the most important sequence in breast MRI. Uh, in post-contrast images, it's, it's, uh, it's very important to obtain the first image approximately 60 to 90 seconds after contrast administration. Why? Uh, because most of cancers will show peak enhancement at that time. And then repeated the images uh, rapidly as possible for five to seven minutes. Usually uh, get seven phases of T1 post contrast images. Then we have subtraction images. It helps differentiate the truly enhancing structures from the lesions with high signal intensity and pre contrast T1. After that, we have a MEP images. This is an abbreviation for maximum intensity projection. This image rapidly detect area of maximum enhancement and their relationship with artery or veins. Also, this is very helpful uh, to assess the relation between the lesions if they are multiple. Also, the diffusion weighted images is important. It uh, quantifies the random movement of um, water uh, molecule uh, in the tissue. Why it's important? Because uh, the cancers usually show higher signal intensity at diffusion. The last thing is uh, ADC, which is an abbreviation of apparent diffusion coefficient. The cancers usually have low signal intensity on the ADC map. Uh, this is a T1 non-fat sat image demonstrates area of drop signal intensity, which related to post biopsy marker. So in general, the sequence is um, useful for uh, detecting the presence of fatty components within a lesion, and also to detect uh, the biopsy marker as in this case. Uh, this is a T2 fat sat. <clears throat> Usually the T2 fat sats uh, enable uh, visualization of the cysts and sometimes useful uh, for uh, creating indirect, uh, indirect MRI ductography as the fluid usually show high signal intensity on T2. This image demonstrates bilateral uh, variable sized masses with high signal intensity on T2 in keeping with bilateral cysts. Uh, you should know that most of the masses with the uh, high signal intensity at T2 weighted images are benign, except few types of cystic masses. Uh, these are um, MRI sequences uh, done for patient with the known left breast cancer. In the upper inner quadrant of the left breast, there are two iso-intense masses with irregular, as you see here, irregular margins, which demonstrate diffusion restriction. This is the diffusion and the, this is the ADC map. In the diffusion, the lesion demonstrates high signal intensity and its drop in ADC map. This is indicating diffusion restriction. These three are uh, early post-contrast images. The, the first one is uh, post-contrast T1 fat sat. The uh, second one is subtraction image. And the third one is uh, MEB image. They demonstrate two early enhancing 
masses in the inner hemisphere of the left breast. So what are, uh, what are the indications of uh, breast MRI? There are common uh, indications uh, for breast MRI and on top of them, the staging of uh, the known breast cancer, also evaluation of response uh, to a new adjuvant chemotherapy, screening of breast cancer in women at increased risk, and also uh, important in post lumpectomy with positive margins, uh, it can be useful also in breast implants, you, um, especially in the um, intracapsular uh, rupture. Uh, axillary carcinoma with unknown primary origin and further assessment of uh, indeterminate findings in mammogram and ultrasound. We will go through each one later uh, in this lecture. Now, we should know how to report breast MRI. First of all, we'll start with general breast composition. The first thing you wanna know is the amount of fibroglandular tissue. The categories of, uh, of, uh, breast, of uh, breast composition define by visually estimated contents of fibroglandular tissue within the breasts. So we have four categories. The first one, almost entirely fat. The second one, scattered fibroglandular tissue. As you can see here, most of the breast is fatty with few amount of fibroglandular tissue. The third one is heterogeneous fibroglandular tissue, and the last one is extreme fibroglandular tissue. After that, uh, you want to describe uh, the four categories of uh, background parenchymal enhancement. This is estimated enhancement of the fibroglandular tissue. Um, currently, it refers to the um, volume uh, intensity uh, of uh, enhancement. The first one is minimal. As you see here, barely enhancement. The second one, mild. The third one is moderate. And the fourth is marked background parenchymal enhancement. Usually, the assessment occur on first post-contrast image, usually at uh, 90 seconds. Another thing to note is whether the breast enhancement in both breasts symmetric or asymmetric. The first one, as you can see here, demonstrate bilateral symmetric enhancement and usually it's benign. The second one showed asymmetrical enhancement. Uh, if you see asymmetrical enhancement, you should always review the clinical data, mammography and ultrasound. Why? Because there are benign causes for asymmetric enhancement like yes, Like in this case, the patient had prior radiation therapy for the left breast cancer. And as you can see here, minimal background parenchymal enhancement in, is noted in the left breast compared to the right side. Now we'll talk about the findings associated with abnormal enhancement. Could be focus, masses, or non-mass enhancement. In masses, we'll describe the shape, margins, and internal enhancement. In non-mass enhancement, we'll describe the distribution and internal enhancement pattern. So what is the focus? The focus is an area of enhancement measuring less than five millimeter. 
um, which is uh, too small to be characterized. This is the focus. And these are multiple foci. You should notice that uh, if there are bilateral, multiple symmetric enhancing foci, this should be considered as benign back background parenchymal enhancement. Usually uh, the focus have progressive pattern of enhancement indicated benign nature. After that, we'll describe the masses. What is the mass? The mass is a 3D space occupying legion. First, we'll describe the shape of the mass. It's either oval, round, or irregular. Usually, irregular, uh, irregular masses are uh, malignant. Once you describe the shape, then you want to analyze the margins. It's either circumscribed or non-circumscribed. Usually, the circumscribed margins are considered benign. You should know that there are circumscribed masses could be malignant, but in general, you should take a number of things in your mind to decide whether the mass is benign or malignant. The non-circumscribed uh, non uh, non masses sorry, divided to irregular margins and speculated margins as in this case. After that, you wanna describe the internal enhancement. There are four patterns of internal enhancement, homogeneous, uniform enhancement, heterogeneous, non-uniform enhancement, and REM enhancement here. As you see, the enhancement seen at the periphery. Um, you can see this pattern of enhancement and in inflammatory cysts, fat necrosis, or high-grade invasive ductal carcinoma. The last one is internal dark septations, and uh, this is typical uh, for uh, fibroadenoma. We are finishing uh, finish the um, masses uh, main descriptors factors. Now we'll go to the non-mass enhancement. What is the non-mass enhancement? It's not really a mass, and the margins cannot be assessed due to uh, diffuse enhancement. So in non-mass enhancement, we'll describe the distribution and internal pattern of, uh, of internal enhancement. We will start with a distribution. We have five distribution patterns. The first one is focal. Uh, focal mean less than 25% of quadrant of the breast. We have uh, also linear distribution. Or could be segmental distribution as in this case. That segmental distribution has a 78 chance of being cancer. Here you see multiple regions, and uh, this is commonly seen in multifocal and um, multicentric uh, disease. Another, fo uh, another forms of distribution, sorry, as regional and diffuse non mass enhancement. In this case, there is diffuse breast cancer causing diffuse enhancement. Um, the patient, this patient presented with um, firm right breast and turned to be a malignancy. After we describe the distribution, now we'll describe the internal pattern of, uh, inter uh, internal pattern of enhancement. This image on the left demonstrates homogeneous internal pattern of enhancement. Here, you can see heterogeneous internal pattern of, of enhancement. 
Another type is clump internal enhancement. It, um, <clears throat> it looks like a couple's tone, like enhancement. So we have this case. In this case, this is the left MLO view. Are we right? From screening mammogram, show a small cluster of microcalcifications. This is the MEB image, shows a large area of segmental clump representing actual extent of the disease. If you can see here, the extent of the disease. The extension on MRI is more than that you have been seen on mammogram. This was biopsied and shown to be um, invasive ductal carcinoma. This pattern of internal enhancement has a 60% chance of cancer. It's typically seen in ductal carcinoma in situ. We have also clustered rings that represent periductal enhancement, and usually this is a suspicious findings. Now we'll talk about the associated features. The associated features should be reported when you see it. Uh, the, um, we have nebul retraction, nebul invasion, skin retraction, skin thickening, skin invasion, invasion, sorry, axillary adenopathy, pectoralis muscle or chest wall invasion. In this case, the mass invading the nipple, causing nipple invasion and retraction. In this case, there is diffuse skin thickening and retraction in patient with invasive cancer. This is a case of metastatic axillary lymphadenopathy in a patient with known right breast cancer. This is an example of pectoralis muscle invasion. As you can see here, this irregular mass invading the skin and the pectoralis muscle. Breast MRI reporting also include the kinetic curve assessment. We have three types of curves. First, <clears throat> we look at the initial upslope of the first during the first two minutes. This either slow, medium, or rapid. Then after two minutes or more, <clears throat> We look at the delayed portion. This is the delayed portion, sorry. This shows either persistent plateau or washout. So we have three types of curves. This is the type one, showed slow initial rise and persistent enhancement on delayed images. The chance of malignancy here is 6%, and this is common with benign findings. The type two showed slow or fast initial rise followed by a plateau in the delayed images. The chance of malignancy here is six to 29%. Type two curves are rare in malignancy usually. Um, it can be uh, seen in um, ductal carcinoma in situ or uh, more invasive cancers like lobular breast cancer. In type three, um, the legion demonstrates fast initial rise and followed by drop off or washout in the delayed phase. The legion with type three kinetic curve are highly suspicious for malignancy. And the chance of malignancy is 29 to 77%.
Um, then we'll describe the non-enhancing findings of present in the MRI. What are these? We have ductal pre-contrast high signal intensity on T1. We can see this in case of hemorrhage or proteinaceous material inside the retroareolar ducts. Also, we have cysts, post-operative collections like hematoma and seroma, post-therapy, skin thickening and trabecular thickening, non-enhancing mass, architectural distortion, and signal void from foreign bodies or clips, as we see earlier in this presentation. These are multiple cysts, appears as a hyper-intense lesions on T2 fat sat with no enhancement on post-contrast images. Also, we should describe the fat-containing lesions if present, like lymph nodes, fat necrosis, hamartoma, lipoma, and post-operative seroma or hematoma with fat. These images are typical for intramammary lymph node. <clears throat> On mammogram, present as circumscribed oval lesion with central lucency at peripheral location. The ultrasound shows oval mass with hyperechoic hilum and hypoechoic cortex. The MRI demonstrates circumscribed reniform mass with higher <clears throat> fat signal in T1 weighted images. As you see, it's similar to the adjacent fat and homogeneous enhancement <clears throat> on the post contrast images. Sorry, homogeneous enhancement of the cortex, as you see here in the post contrast images. This is typical for intramammary lymph nodes. This image images show an oval shape, high signal intensity mass in the axial T1 non-fat set. Then the axial post-contrast T1 fat set shows suppressed signal in the mass identical to the adjacent normal fatty tissue. Finally, you should give an assessment category based on virus. We have category zero to six. The category zero means incomplete, need additional imaging evaluation. It involves repeat MRI due to poor technique or um, <clears throat> obtaining information with the other imaging modality like uh, mammogram and ultrasound. Category one, negative means normal examination, uh, category two, benign findings such as uh, intramammary lymph node, biopsy marker, cysts, and no management needed in this category. Category three is probably benign. The category, uh, this category, sorry, should have less than 2% likelihood of malignancy, but greater than 0%. This means follow-up masses that is not very highly suspicious uh, based on morphology and, uh, and kinetics analysis. Such as what? Oval or round masses with circumscribed margins and homogeneous enhancement. Um, the management usually six month follow-up by MRI um, until stability for two years. We have also the category five, uh, sorry, four. This is uh, suspicious. Uh, the likelihood of malignancy is more than 2%, but less than uh, 95%. This category for um, findings that don't have classic appearance of malignancy, but uh, appear suspicious. The management is tissue diagnosis under MRI guided biopsy for 
the lesions not visible on mammogram or ultrasound. But in case that we can see the lesions on either, uh, either on a mammogram or ultrasound, the tissue diagnosis should be, or the biopsy will, should be done under mammogram or ultrasound because it, uh, yeah, it's faster, uh, comfortable, and less cost effect. The fifth one is the category five. The category five is highly suggestive of malignancy. The likelihood is more than 95%. Category six, known biopsy proven malignancy. This for examination performed after biopsy and before surgery, like staging of known cancer. This ACR uh, Barrett's Atlas fifth edition, which summarized breast MRI reporting. After we finish breast MRI reporting, I will talk now briefly about the indications of breast MRI in clinical practice. <clears throat> One thing you can use it for is staging of known breast cancer. It helps in the evaluation of tumor size the second thing is to evaluate the extent of the disease. We should exclude multicentric or multifocal disease and invasion to the pectoralis muscle. What is the multifocal disease? Is uh, two or more tumor foci in the same quadrant of the breast. And the multicentric is two or more tumor foci in different quadrants. And it can be one or more invasive tumors more than five centimeters from the primary tumor. Also, it's helpful in screening of the contralateral breast. Breast MRI detects occult contralateral disease in 5.5 to 9.3% of women with non unilateral breast cancer. First, you assess the tumor size, particularly with invasive lobular carcinoma, and also good to detect the associated DCIS components, because MRI is better than mammography and detection and, and, and assessment of DCIS components. Here, the left MLO view mammogram shows heterogeneously dense breast with dense asymmetry in the upper hemisphere. No obvious mass could be seen in ultrasound. There is a regular hypoechoic mass. This is an MRI, post-contrast MRI, post MRI T1 uh, fat sat image, which demonstrates a regular mass with linear non-mass enhancement seen anterior to X. So, as you can see here, this is very helpful to know the extension of the disease in patients with known breast cancer. MRI can also help to assess whether the disease is multifocal or multicentric. The first image, this is an axial T1 post-contrast subtraction demonstrate irregular mass with heterogeneous internal enhancement, a small or similar one seen medial to it, in keeping with multicentric disease. The other one is an example of pectoralis mus muscle invasion, as we see before. You can see the mass invading the pectoralis muscle with abnormal enhancement seen within the muscle. A uh, woman with any of these factors are good candidates for preoperative evaluation with MRI, hormone receptors, negative cancers, dense breasts, breast conservation without radiation therapy and invasive lobular carcinoma. Another indication 
as uh, to evaluate uh, treatment response in patient receiving new adjuvant chemotherapy. I will show you an example here. This was a patient that had invasive ductal carcinoma. You see your large enhancing mass. This image obtained before the treatment. Nice, yeah. After a few months, the second image was obtained, and you can see here there is interval regression in the size of the non tumor in keeping with partial response to the new adjuvant chemotherapy. There are four categories for response according to the response evaluation criteria in solid tumors. Complete response, partial response, stable disease, and progressive disease. In complete response, usually all the lesions should be disappeared. And the reduction in the short axis of any pathological lymph nodes to less than 10 millimeter. In partial response, at least 30% decrease in the sum of diameters of targeted lesions. In the progressive disease, at least 20% increase in the sum of diameters of targeted lesions or in newly developed lesions. Stable disease is stable, nothing changed compared to uh, the previous images. Another indication is carcinoma of unknown primary origin, breast MRI helpful in axillary carcinoma of unknown primary origin with suspicion of uh, origin in the breasts because breast MRI can detect small enhancing foci. MRI depicts the primary cancer and the breast in up to 60% of cases. When MRI findings are negative, radiation therapy to the epsilateral breast is as safe as mastectomies. Uh, also, breast MRI helpful in uh, inconclusive findings in conventional imaging. When the findings of the conventional imaging are inconclusive, like in BIRAD0, for example, if we have uh, any suspicious abnormality in mammography with no um, <clears throat> corresponding uh, abnormality in ultrasound, MRI um, would be helpful to detect any abnormal enhancement. Also, um, MRI can be helpful in patients with breast augmentation, like in case of free silicone injection. The free silicone injection can mimic cancers on mammography. In general, negative breast MRI exclude malignancy. Like in this case, the patient had silicone injection for breast augmentation the mammogram showed bilateral silicon granulomas, which appear as a large dense masses that can obscure uh, cancers. But in the MRI, there is no abnormal enhancement to suggest suspicious, uh, suspicious findings. This is post contrast image. So in this case, MRI is helpful. MRI is also help in women with breast implants, especially to exclude intracapsular rupture of the implant. We have two types of rupture, extracapsular rupture, when the silicon is freely extra extravasated, and this is easily seen by mammogram, and rupture. <laughs> there are many signs to suggest intracapsular ruptures rupture like subcapsular line sign, linguini sign, keyhole sign, teardrop and no sign. There are special sequences used to assess the breast implant and often, and usually <clears throat> no need for contrast uh, if the indication is only for uh, this purpose. In uh, intracapsular rupture, the contents of the implants are contained by the fibrous scar. This is the fibrous scar. While the shell is uh, collapsed. 
So when the shell is minimally collapsed, <clears throat> this is the subcapsular line sign. Uh, as you can see here in the left breast, when significantly collapsed, it appears as a group of wavy lines. This is a Linguini sign. Here you can see the keyhole sign and nose sign. These signs refer to the appearance of silicon on both sides of a radial fold. This is also suggest an implant rupture. One of the most important indication of breast MRI is screening of breast cancer in women at increased risk. So MRI is recommended as a supplemental screening examination in high risk population by multiple national and international guidelines in addition to mammography. There are three categories of risk based on American Cancer Society guidelines. High risk woman, intermediate risk woman, and average risk woman. In high risk group, the women with a lifetime risk of more than 20% are considered as high risk women. This risk this sorry, high risk group includes many genetic mutations like BRCA1 and 2, history of chest radiation before the age of 30, usually for treatment of lymphoma, syndromes like Lefromani and Coden. In uh, intermediate risk group, the woman with a lifetime risk between 15 and 20% are considered as intermediate risk women. This group include personal history of breast cancer, uh, also include dense breasts at mammography. If there is any history also for, um, of uh, high risk lesions at biopsy, like atypical ductal hyper hyperplasia or lobular carcinoma in situ, um, the screening in average risk woman uh, is not recommended. <clears throat> the last thing I will talk about uh, screening breast MRI. Uh, sorry, the abbreviated breast MRI. So what is the abbreviated breast MRI? It's a faster targeted MRI scan used for screening of women at risk of breast cancer. What are, the what are the benefits uh, of uh, abbreviated uh, breast MRI? Reduce the costs, shorter scan time, and shorter interpretation time. The protocol include one pre and one early post contrast T1 weighted images, plus first post contrast subtraction sequence and map. A recent review of uh, 21 studies on abbreviated breast MRI performed in eight countries and um, in more than 4,500 women confirmed the diagnostic accuracy was similar to the full MRI protocol. In summary, screening with breast MRI leads to earlier cancer detection in all high-risk women. Describe how breast MRI protocols can be modified to address a particular clinical indication. Also, also the importance of breast MRI in a clinical practice. The breast MRI is an indispensable modality along with mammography and ultrasound. We talk about the importance of pirates and supplemental descriptors for evaluation of lesions at breast MRI. And given the final assessment category and recommendations for each breast. 
Um, thank you very much for your attention and I will be very happy to receive any questions here or through my email. Thank you. يعطيك العافية دكتورة ملاك سعيدين بالمبادرة سعيدين بالمشاركة شرفتينا وإن شاء الله ما راح تكون المبادرة الأخيرة تفضلوا ممكن تكتبوا الأسئلة بالشاتنج وبيتم الرد على بعض الأسئلة وإمكانكم التواصل مع الدكتور عبر الإيميل للاستفسار أو التواصل معها بأي استفسار أو بحث أو مشاركة جديدة Okay, تبدأ بالسؤال الأول. What is the best sequence to evaluate the amount of fibroglandular tissue? Usually, the pre-contrasty one is used to evaluate the amount of fibroglandular tissue. السؤال الثاني uh, Is there any factors that can uh, increase the background parenchymal enhancement? Uh, yes, the background parenchymal enhancement can um, change um, due to hormonal effects. It can be increased uh, with the hormonal uh, replacement therapy. It can be also decreased when the patient use tamoxifen. Uh, also the uh, background parenchymal enhancement can be marked uh, in the luteal phase of the cycle. Because of that, I mentioned that the best time for MRI examination is the second week of menstrual cycle to avoid the uh, marked enhancements. Already I wrote my email in the first uh, slide. يعطيكم العافية شاكرين حضوركم شاكرين مشاركتكم تعني لنا الكثير وإن شاء الله متواجد معكم بعد رمضان. للتواصل مع دكتورة ملاك بإمكانكم عن طريق الإيميل راح نكتب لكم في الشاتنج راح ننزل لكم الآن يعطيكم العافية مشكورة دكتورة ملاك ولنا إن شاء الله مشاركات جديدة العفو العفو أنا سعيدة جدا بمشاركتي اليوم Thank you very much